This is an A-level biology presentation looking at gas exchange in single cell organisms and insects. In this session, we're going to look at how organisms are adapted for gas exchange. We're going to look at tracheal systems inside insects, and we're going to explain how they're adapted to ensure the efficient gas exchange with the minimum amount of water loss. To get started, what is Fick's law and how is a leaf adapted for diffusion of gas? Pause the presentation, come up with your answer, and when you're ready, you can restart the presentation. Well, Fick's law is the law that shows that the rate of diffusion is proportional to the surface area of the exchange surface multiplied by the concentration gradient divided by the diffusion distance. And in terms of how leaves are adapted, well, they have a large number of stomata, they have air spaces, and they also have a large surface area of mesophyll cells for gas exchange. Remember, when it comes to fixed law, we are talking about proportionality. We are not talking about equal to. We can also talk about the fact that Organisms are very thin because if they're very thin, we have a large surface area. We have a very small volume. And with the difference in the surface area to volume ratio, we can then change the rate of diffusion. However, we need to be careful because with organisms, when we're talking about gas exchange, the same way that the gas gets in, water can also escape and therefore you have to get a balance between making sure that you have fast enough gas exchange for the cover respiration rates, but not so much exchange that you have excessive water loss, which is the issue in larger organisms. If we'd simply worked off diffusion, we would lose water far too fast in order to survive, and we wouldn't be able to transport gas quick enough to the cells around our body. Think about Fick's law and try and identify how a single cell organism such as an amoeba is adapted for the maximum rate of gas exchange. Pause the presentation, spend a maximum of two minutes coming up with your ideas, and when you're ready, you can restart the presentation. So pause now. Well, in terms of single cell amoeba, we can talk about the surface area to volume ratio, and they have a high surface area to volume ratio, which means substances will move through them quickly. It has a cell membrane, remember the phospholipid bilayer, as a gas exchange surface, so it has the thinnest possible exchange surface and distance the substance have to travel across. We also have to make sure that it has a permeable cell wall so that gases can move freely through the cell wall and are not affected by the cell wall. And quite often what you'll find is that you have some level of moisture, which again will help increase the rate of diffusion. While it's not part of Fick's law, it is an important adaptation. So we've got single cell organisms. If we progress on to multicellular organisms, for example, we can talk about earthworms. And earthworms do not have any special organs adapted for gas exchange. Gas exchange still just occurs through the surface of their body. The question is why? Well, there's two reasons for it. The first I'm hoping you realize is that they have a large surface area. And the second one is the fact that they live in damp conditions. The next question is how do they carry nutrients, gases around the body? How do they actually get it through all the cells. Well, they've got what's called a closed circuitry system and they've got a blood pigment. When we look at other types of worms, for example, flatworms, flatworms have more efficient diffusion systems than earthworms. The question is why and what are the benefits of this? Well, the fact that they are flat means that they have a very small diffusion pathway for any gas to get to any cell. As a consequence, they have a much faster rate of diffusion, and as a consequence, they can be much more active than earthworms. When we start looking at insects, 
Insects, again, have no specific systems for the transport of gases. They don't have things like lungs and gills. But what they have got is certain structures that have been adapted into what's called a tracheal system. And a tracheal system is where gas exchange occurs in an insect. Insects are adapted to conserve water because if they dry out, then they very quickly will die. As a consequence, they have a small surface area to volume ratio, and they've got waterproof coverings in the form of an exoskeleton. Insects have a number of tubes that run directly from the surface of their body all the way down into their tissues. And it's through these particular tubes that gas can be transported directly from the external environment into the cells of the insect's body. When we start looking at the particular format of it, we start with what's called a spiracle on the outside, and that's the actual opening that the gas can move through. We then have the tracheal tubes, and the tracheal tubes then go down and get smaller and smaller into what we call tracheolus tubes, and eventually they make it to the body cells. And gas can move freely through these tubes from the outside environment all the way down to the cells of the insect. Now there is a question, suggest how the rate of diffusion and water loss can be controlled because water is going to escape out those tubes, but by the same token, we have to allow gas in those tubes. So what kind of mechanism is going to be used by the insect to control the amount of water inside those tubes and as a consequence, the rate of diffusion? And I am giving you a hint with water. When we have respiration occurring inside the cells of the insect, we create a concentration gradient with high levels of CO2 in the cells and low levels of oxygen. And the reverse, we have higher levels of oxygen in the tracheoles because that's the gas that's come through from the outside environment. And we also have lower levels of CO2. And as a consequence, because of the concentration gradient, CO2 moves out of the cells and O2 moves into the cells. Now the insect's actually able to regulate the spiracles and open and close them to prevent water escaping. What it also does is it's also able to move its abdomen in a kind of twitching pattern, and that can also increase the rate at which gas moves in and out. We mentioned earlier about how insects were able to control the rate of gas exchange. And what we talked about was the regulation of water loss, and it comes down to water potentials and osmosis. During respiration, you have a natural buildup of gases, as we've already said. However, when we switch to anaerobic respiration, we also start to produce what's called lactic acid or lactate. If we're producing lactic acid, we are actually changing the water potential of the water inside the cells. And as a consequence, water starts to be drawn from the tracheoles and starts to move in to the cells. As the water moves into the cells, it moves water out of the tracheolus, and therefore there is more of the tracheolus that is exposed to the atmospheric gas. And as a consequence, we can increase the rate of gas exchange. Now, what is the mean limitation of this method of gas exchange? Well, it basically comes down to size. This system limits the size of the organism because while it's still a system that starts to develop some kind of control over gas exchange, not relying on simple diffusion alone, it's still not complex enough to support larger forms of life, such as the animal kingdom. At this point, we've explained adaptations of single cell organisms for gas exchange. We've had a look at the insect tracheal systems. We've talked about how the trachea system is adapted to ensure gas exchange as quickly and efficiently as possible, while at the same time it's balancing out the need for minimal water loss.